Good evening, church family. Uh, Pastor Danny Evans here. Um, tonight we're gonna we're gonna spend a few minutes together in God's Word, and uh, we're going to uh, see uh, what He has to tell us tonight uh, as we uh, as we spend time once again in His precious, precious Holy Word. Uh, so before we get started, let's just uh, let's just take a second to uh, prepare ourselves as we uh, hear from God's Word. Okay, just bow with me. Father God, we are so thankful for the many miracles of life, the beauty of your love, and how you care for us to God each and every day of our lives. I thank you, Father, personally for my family, my church family, and for everything that you, uh, that you do for me each and every day of my life, dear Father, in spite of myself. And I pray to Father that tonight, that as we spend these few moments together as your family, that we may be taught by the Holy Spirit the things that we need to know, that we might live a life that's pleasing to you, and we might strive each and every day to bring honor and glory to your holy name. So Father, just bless this evening. Let it be pleasing in your sight. For in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I figured to do something a little different tonight. Sit down here where Miss Jeannie sits normally on Sunday morning and uh, just read from God's Word, share from my heart. Uh, you know, it's been some time since we've been able to come together. And as I just sit here and look out across the uh, sanctuary here and all the pews, uh, I, I visualize all of my members and all my friends and family out here. Uh, and I'm looking forward to the day soon. Uh, sooner than later that we'll be able to come together again. Don't know when that's going to be. Uh, I am specifically listening to God's guidance as far as that's concerned. Uh, and as soon as I get a clear signal from Him, then we'll, we'll, uh, we will get together once again. But before we look at God's Word tonight, I just want to uh, share not really a testimony, but just a little bit what's been going on uh, in my life over these past several weeks. As we've been uh, at this uh, stay at home or shelter in place or whatever the terminology they want to use for it is, uh, it's given me a lot more time to, uh, to think, uh, to uh, uh, be thankful for the things that I have, uh, my family, uh, all of my family, <clears throat> not just my wife and my children and my grandchildren, but my mother and mother-in-law and sister-in-laws and, and everybody. Uh, but also has given me a chance to uh, look at look at God's word and, and to try to comprehend more about my responsibility and the things that I need to be doing, the focus I need to put in my life. Uh, so you know, just just from my heart, you know, I, I I love love the Lord God, and I want to do things that are pleasing to Him uh, in, in whatever way He sees fit for me to do so. Uh, through you know working, uh, through uh, you know the ministry that he has placed me in here, uh, I know there's so much more work to be done, and I just hope and pray that uh, God will allow me the ability and the time to do that as we go through uh, these set, these next months and years um, together as a family here at uh, First Baptist Church of Putney. As I was thinking about the scriptures, as I was thinking about things that we needed to talk about tonight, you know, we've been talking about sanctification, we've been talking about love and joy, uh, and peace that passes all understanding, we've talked about oneness of the church and what the true church is. I think it's important for us to reflect back on something, a topic that we have talked about uh, and referred to several times, uh, known as fear of the Lord. Uh, and, and when we think about that as believers, you know, we need to have a greater understanding of what the fear of the Lord is. Um, and, and like we've always said, the scriptures never teaches us that it means to be scared, uh, but it means that we are to be reverent, that we are to understand the allness of who God is, uh, his power. Uh, his uh, knowledge, his omniscience, his uh, ability to be everywhere at one time, his omnipresence. Uh, 
and, and, and just, just the sheer awesomeness of who the real big G God is. So we're going to look in Psalm 76 tonight, and David, probably the author here, uh, titled this a declaration of God's majesty in the church. You know, and, and as I think about that, I think about God's majesty. King of all kings, Lord of all lords, uh, creator of everything, of heaven and earth, of all the beings that we know. That is who God is. The awesomeness of his majesty, of who he is. So let's spend a few minutes tonight. We're going to look through this 12, it's only 12 verses, so there's a lot of power in these verses. So I want us to, to think about these, and I'm going to read them as we go. Verses 1 and 2 talks about the spiritual knowledge of the people in their day of who the awesomeness of God is. So here are these two verses. In Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. In Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. At this particular time, as David was pinning these words down, he was reflecting on a few of the areas where God's presence was felt, where they understood the awesomeness of who God is and would always be, and how holy his name is and always shall be. You know, God is mentioned here, you know, in this particular translation, the King James Version, but so many times in the Old Testament, you know, the name of God cannot even be pronounced because there was even, no, not even any vowels listed in the in the Hebrew or the or the Chaldean or even the Aramaic at that time. But the awesomeness of who God is, you know, in the churches, these these few churches here, it refers to Him, and they understood who He was. And I have to stop and think. You know, as the pastor of here, First Baptist Church of Putney, and then uh, most importantly, you know, more importantly, a pastor, uh, a servant of God Almighty, do we really understand the awesomeness and respect who God truly is? Don't know who all is going to be on tonight listening. I hope, hope quite a few of our members. But, you know, several times we've made comments about, you know, how we act when we come into what we refer to as a sanctuary here, the special place that we can gather together to worship and study God, uh, His holy words, sing praises unto Him. I, I wonder sometimes if we truly understand the majesty and the awesomeness and the holiness of who he is and how we should act. You know, times have changed, but God never has changed. Uh, people have come and gone and, you know, over the ages, but God is always the same. And that being the case, if God is always the same, then the level of reference that we need to have for God Almighty should never change. And I say that to say this, church, being the pastor here at First Baptist Church of Putney. When we come into this sanctuary, the moment that we either come in from the Sunday school wings or we come into the from the front doors, we need to be in awe of who God is. We need to be reverent. We need to act accordingly. Okay? We need to show our love and our respect to God as they did here, as they understood here. And so many churches around the world today still have this type of respect. But I say this, we all should have that type of respect and awesomeness for God and who he is. But look what he, what he does here in verse 3. He says, There break he the arrows of the bow and the shield and the sword and the battle, Selah, 
God was and is their protector and ours today. Only God could perform the things that he did in those days. Only God could bring them through tremendous battles because of their faith they had in him, because of who God is. And it's the same today, folks. You know, all the things that we're dealing with in our society and our world today, the same God that brought them through then can and will bring us through today if we have total trust and faith in him. Do we? Do we, church family? Do we have that type of faith? Do we have that level of of understanding of the awesomeness of God? Hmm. Makes me wonder sometimes. But then we talk about stout-heartedness or stubbornness. And I, I know we all know what I'm talking about when I say stubborn. We've all been there before. Raise your hand. We've all been stubborn before in our ways. I have. You have. Everyone has. Look what God's word says about that in 5 and 6. It says the stout-hearted are spoiled, the stubborn, if you will. They have slept their sleep, and none of the men of might have found their hands. Speaking of the humiliation, you know, these mighty men that thought they were it, but did not have God, they were humiliated because of the way they live, because of the things that they've done against God Almighty. At thy rebuke, O God of Jacob, both the chariot and horse are cast into a deep sleep. This is divine reproof we're talking about. This is God looking at a situation and because of who he is, implementing the reproof that was necessary and the penalties that was necessary because of their sin. Now, if our God, which is the same God of David here, would bring justice upon individuals for not doing the things that they were supposed to do, don't you think he'd do the same thing today? And I know the answer to that based on God's word. Absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. Does that mean he doesn't love us? No, that's not what it means. It means he does love us. He continues to love us. If he didn't, he wouldn't care. And will just let us continue down the path that we go down. But he does care. In church tonight, I want us to think about that. As believers here at our church family, when we do those things that are stubborn or stout-hearted or against the will of the Father, and when he chastises us, don't blame him. Blame self. As with salvation, it's between an individual and God such as the decisions that we make in our individual lives. When we choose to follow the will of the Father, then he is pleased. But when we choose not to, then he's not pleased. And there's repercussions for that. Just like we spoke of this morning, about hearing and obeying equals wisdom, versus hearing minus obeying is disaster or trouble. Fear God, he says, verse 7 through 9. Thou, even thou, art to be feared. And who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still. And when God rose to judgment to, say, to save all the meek of the earth, Selah. 
Thou, even thou, art to be feared. Notice the double emphasis that David places on verse 7 in this first part. Thou, even thou. He's talking about God. He's talking about the true Jehovah God of the Old Testament, the New Testament, and for all eternity. Thou art to be feared. Okay? Just think about that for a second. Those individuals in this world that have never accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, that stand against Him in strict opposition, they need to be scared. They need to fear God because He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's over everything. And His wrath and judgment is far greater than any humiliation that can come from man, any defeat that can come from a battle, is far, far greater than that. And that's talking to those that are lost. But also, again, to us as believers, thou, even thou, art to be feared. We as believers need to fear God. We need to respect Him. And I'm not talking about just here at church. I'm talking about every day of our life. We need to respect God. In our actions, and our reactions, the things that we say and do, we need to fear, respect, stand in awe of who God is. And look what he says in the rest of seven there. And who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? The wrath of God. Let's think about some examples of the wrath of God. We talked a little bit this morning about a few things, but I want, I want to carry that a little further. The Tower of Babel. Let's think about the Tower of Babel. All the people came together. They were at one time of one language. But because of their arrogance... They thought that they could reach into the heavens and be as God was. God, being God, saw the arrogance of man at that particular time in history. And what did he do? He destroyed the Tower of Babel. And he gave all of the individuals there different tongues, different, uh, different languages, and they were split and went to different parts of the world. That's the wrath of God. All right. We talked a little bit about Noah this morning. Why did the flood come? And we won't go into depth about this right now. But see the wrath of God on his creation pre-flood. God looked down at mankind and the evil that was going on and it bothered God because of his creation. Not to go into deep details, like I said, but there were things going on on the earth where the sons of man were interacting with the women on this earth, fornication, Different things were taking place. Worship of little g gods. The arrogance of mankind. And then we know the rest of the story. God sought out a holy man. A man that was right before his eyes, Noah. And his family. And he was given instructions to build a boat. The ark as we know it. To bring the animals in. Given numbers, two by two, seven by seven, and his family. And then God would shut the doors, and then his wrath was poured out upon this earth, and everything was destroyed. That's the wrath of God. So when we sit here and we say, may stand in, the, in thy sight when once thou art angry, that's God's wrath. Sodom and Gomorrah, same way. Evil was rampant, rampant. 
God tried to find those individuals that were good in his sight. And we know the story. There was only a few. And they fled the city and everyone else was destroyed. We need to fear God and respect God just like what took place there. Because I've said this many times before, and I'll say it until I go home to be with the Lord. God can instill the same type of wrath on us today as he did then if he sees fit. He said, Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven, and the earth feared and was still. When great events happen like this, and God Almighty causes things to happen, it causes people of this earth to be caught and attention goes to God maybe we do need to fear him maybe we do need to understand who he is yeah we do the world needs to know that today we as believers need to share that today he says when God rose, arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth Notice how individuals were saved during all of these different cases. God always made a way. And we see this as a precursor of Jesus Christ coming to the earth because we're all, we were all destined for a devil's hell because of the old sin nature inside of us. But he made a way of salvation. God did through Jesus Christ his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe on him would not perish, but have life everlasting. In the times of old, he made a way of salvation. In the times present, he continues to make a way of salvation. Yeah, it's bad out there. All this COVID stuff, all these different bad things that are going on around our country and around our world, but God still has a plan of salvation. He still has a way for men and women, boys and girls, to be saved. And that's the same way as it's always been through belief in God, belief in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Verse 10, surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. The remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. We look at meekness. We look at divine control here. As all these individuals, they see the things of God. Eventually they bow down. And say, this God that you serve, this is the true God. He is the real God. There is no other God. A bunch of little G-gods, but they don't count for nothing. Only the one big G-god counts. Verse 11, it says, Vow and pay unto the Lord your God. What's he talking about there? Vow and pay. You know, a lot of times we think of vowing and paying, we think of money. That's the first thing that comes to money, 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 money. So tired about money. Every time you turn around, something's about money. But this is talking about giving of ourself a sacred vow to God Almighty. God would desire for us as individual believers, once we're saved, to turn our life over to him 100%. And yeah, that includes money too. But it's more important that we turn ourselves over to him. We vow ourselves to him in a way that he is pleased, that he is blessed, that we show respect to him. He says, let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. Again, it's not just the money. It's our time. It's our talents. It's all those things that are within us. We need to give those things to God. We ought to do that, he says. We ought to do that. That means 
It's not an option. It's a command. We're commanded to do those things. But how about the humble? How about the proudness and the arrogance of the humble? Verse 12, he says, He shall cut off the spirit of princes. He is ter terrible to the kings of the earth. Folks, God gives everyone an opportunity. Everyone has an opportunity, okay? Don't, don't misunderstand that. Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, gives an opportunity to every person on the face of the earth, okay? What he's talking about here is the arrogance of these people that think they're better than God, these princes, these kings of the earth. And we've seen it through the past. We've seen it throughout history, how these evil kings would stand against the true and living God and how they would miserably fail. It's no different than today. And I won't pull no punches because I believe in what God's word says. There's one God. There's one big G God. His name is Jehovah. It's not Islam. It's not Buddha. Harry Krishna. It's not any of these other little G gods that are being pushed on humanity today. There's only one God. And let me say this. All of those people that I mentioned, all of those different false beliefs that I just mentioned, we need to love those people. We need to love on them, pray for them, share with them as God gives us the ability of who the real God is. Not to be radical, not to be violent, but to show love, love towards these individuals. Because without God, based on God's word, and this is what I believe with all my heart, if they do not accept Christ as Lord and Savior, they do not understand how to truly fear God, then one day when they leave this earth, this plan of existence, through death or the end of the tribulation, then they will spend an eternity in a devil's hell. And we should not desire that once whatsoever for anyone. You know, the Bible teaches us that we are to study to show thyself approved to work and unto God and needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The word of God is a, is a two-edged sword, sharp and dividing into the asunder of the soul and the spirit as a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. We need to study God's word. We need to be able to discern and talk to people and tell them about who our God is, the real God, the only God, the creator of everything, and the one that will reside and live forever. So tonight, as we have spent the short period of time together <clears throat> talking about the fear of the Lord, I hope and pray that the Spirit has spoken to y'all, as he has me, about the importance of us fearing God in a way of respect and honor, to stand in awe of him, and be the men and women he's called us to be. The next Sunday morning will be Mother's Day. We'll have a special service to bring honor to our earthly mothers, to say thank you, to look at God's word, and to share. And I greatly encourage each and every one of you to reach out to your friends and those others that maybe uh, aren't going to church nowhere, or maybe their churches have been shut down and they don't have the ability to watch you know, live services to come on board with us, because we'll be looking at God's word, and we'll be sharing God's word. And then if there's any out there, uh, and I always hope and pray that there are those that are watching, 
through curiosity or maybe the Spirit has drawn you to this channel, that you might hear what God's Word says. That He loves you. He cares for you. He wants you to spend an eternity with Him in heaven one day. But go ahead and settle it. Get right before God before you don't have another chance. So if y'all would, just bow with me for a minute as we pray. And uh, well, first of all, pray for those that are uh, unbelievers that may be watching tonight or, can eat, or maybe just hear us tonight. God loves you so much. He sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross after living a perfect life shedding his blood for us, dying and raising, rising again on that third day. We need to understand we have that old sin nature that resides inside of us. We all inherited it, whether we wanted to or not. It came from Adam and Eve because of the fall in the garden. If that sin nature is not covered by the blood of Jesus, you're destined for a devil's hell. But right now, tonight, you can ask Jesus, say, listen, I understand that I'm a sinner based on what Brother Danny has taught me from his word, from God's word. And Jesus, I want you to come into my heart and into my life. Cover that old sin nature and forgive me of my sins and let me live a new life that's pleasing to you. And that's my prayer for you tonight. It's a simple prayer. One that you can pray right where you are and accept Christ and be saved for all eternity. But then for those of us that are believers, do we really understand the fear of the Lord? Do we really understand what it means to be reverent? To understand the awesomeness of God and our responsibility? Believers, tonight, if you're out there and you don't understand that, my prayer is this, that even now, even now, you'll begin to understand that and you will say, God, I am so sorry. You saved my soul through your son, Jesus Christ. I need to show my respect and my honor to you. And I can't speak for y'all. I can only speak for myself. You know your own hearts. You know the things that are going on in your life that would cause you not to have that level of respect. If you got that problem tonight, all you got to do is go before Jesus and fall on your knees before Him and leave it with Him and say thank you and walk away from it. So, Father, your blessings, I pray, upon this night upon all the decisions that are to be made and have been made, that awesomeness and fear and love will be brought to your holy name. Of course, in your precious Son, Jesus Christ, we pray and we ask it. Amen. Thank you all tonight for being here with us for this uh, period of time that we've had to look at God's Word, for you hearing from my heart uh, the things going on in my life. And I pray that we'll think of someone this week. A brother and sister in Christ, maybe. A family member. Someone that we just need to reach out to. Let's do that. Let's do that that God has called us to. And be the people that he expects us to be. Ask God to lay someone in our past this week. Ask God to place an individual that has never accepted Christ in your path. And then when he shows you who that individual is, with boldness that comes from God, go to that individual and speak the things that God has placed inside of you and me to that individual that he's directed us to. So may God bless you and protect you until the next time. I love you all and we look forward to uh, hearing uh, and talking with you again soon. May God bless you.